folks, back on the Boss Man Show here with professional hockey player Malcolm Hayes for the Atlanta Gladiators out of the ECHL. Man, Malcolm, he's on the bus with us. What's good, brother? How you how you feeling, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Thank you for having me on the show. No doubt, brother. Man, let me ask you, there's not too many brothers who play hockey. So tell me what got you into the game of hockey, man, and wanted to make your, make your hay in the NHL, man, on, on the ice there, brother. <laughs> Yeah, I started when I was young, you know, uh, I was living in Detroit when I started playing. Uh, it's pretty common up there in the north. So when we moved down here, I just kept, uh, kept at it. Somehow I ended up back here playing uh, a few years later. It's pretty funny how it all came full circle. No doubt, man. And so, like for you, man, uh, who was your favorite hockey player growing up, man, to give you inspiration, man, to want to keep on going at this thing, my, my guy? Um, I mean, I, there's a pretty good, pretty good list for that, but I say, like, Number one inspiration would be the first uh, NHL black hockey player, Willie O'Ree. Uh, and then there's, uh, I'd also say Wayne, Wayne Simmons, too. I've always liked the game that he plays. He plays a strong, tough game. So those are probably two of the biggest ones that I would say are like uh, inspirations for me. No doubt. And you are an enforcer, brother. I saw you some of your videos, man. You are an enforcing brother. You you out there not, not, not knocking cats down, man. So talk about <laughs> your game on the ice, man, and, and how you want to leave, leave an impact on the ice for these guys who you're going into every night on, on, on the rink there. Nah, I would just say I play like a heavy physical game. I would say like an enforcer, but you know, I stick up for myself. I stick up for my teammates. And, you know, when something has to go down, then, you know, I have fun with that, but out there trying to make some plays. No doubt. Hey, but, bro, I saw you, man. You got some hands on you, my guy. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I saw, I saw My man got some hands on him. My man doing his thing. And like you said, man, Atlanta used to have the Thrashers. I remember going on some Thrasher games before they left and went to become the Winnipeg Jets now. And your team is with Ottawa, Ottawa underneath them. But when you came down, moved down here, bro, like, how, how did your family and you kind of stay in that hockey mode, connect with people down here? Because the Thrashers were popular here for a while. Yeah. Uh, I would say a lot of that comes from the, the work that my dad put in. He was just good at really networking and just asking questions and uh, asking the hockey parents and stuff like that. Uh, I would say the hockey community down here is pretty small. So, like, if you know one person in it, then you probably know everybody in it. So that's how I got to, uh, I got to this point, really. No doubt. And, and you went to Maine for four years, man. Um, then you went to Alaska Anchorage. And then being from Detroit, I, I guess the cold weather didn't get to you. No way to get, it'll get to me for sure. But talk, talk about the experience being in, up there in Maine, man, playing hockey up there, college hockey up there, then going to Anchorage for your last year, man. Yeah, I mean, both uh, amazing schools, both great experiences. Um, I, was, I was in uh, Maine for four years, obviously, like you said, with the cold. It was pretty bad, but I went to prep school, too, in high school, so I was kind of used to the cold already. And I've always just had that mindset where I'm going to go over for hockey, so it didn't really matter to me if it was hot or cold. But I made it work, so I wasn't too worried about it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I made it even more cold if I go to high school. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, my man loves the cold weather more, more than anybody I know right now. <laughs> 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 all them spots. But, yeah, man, I, I, I like it, man, because I see, you know, the National Predators are, are kind of close to here. So it's Ca uh, Carolina as well, man. So, like, for me, man, I'm glad to see you go, you going into it because uh, my alma mater, Tennessee State, now wants to get a, a hockey team. Men's and women's hockey team. Hockey team, so you know, so I think you'll be good to maybe talk to my people on my alma mater about that as well, brother, as well. But, you know, for me, man, I like your YouTube game, bro. Like, how'd you get in that you, yeah, yeah, YouTube game? Your dad, your, your, your sidekick. Tell us about that, man. Yeah, yeah. I just started it after I finished college. And I just had a little bit more time on my hands. And my dad was just like, you should, like, record this and put this on YouTube. But people want, like, an inside look at what my professional athletes do and stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, I just had a little bit of time. My dad, he left to love YouTube, too. So he was kind of... He was into it, and he was teaching me stuff about YouTube. So we were just having fun with it. You know, Malcolm, for us training, I play football, basketball, baseball. Um, what is the training like for hockey? Because you have to have a lot of endurance to skate 
for three, yeah. three, three periods as well. So, and of course, you have line shifts, shifts, of course. So, what's the training regimen for hockey per se, from a football, basketball, baseball perspective, compared to what, what you have to do? I would say like you gotta have, like, you don't have to be as strong as a football player, but you gotta have strength like a football player. Even if you're just, like a basketball player, you gotta be able to go forever. Like, you have those shifts, so sometimes it's, like, you're not gonna be able to get off when you want to get off. So you have to go an extra 30, 45 seconds. You gotta be able to be ready for that, and that's where it comes also uh, comes down to being strong and what it goes down. No doubt, and you know, you know what, man? Um, I I think that. Let me ask you how can we get more young black men to, to, to look at hockey more so than the route typically taken, which is football, basketball, baseball? How, how can we get more young men involved in wanting to take the hockey path as you have? Uh, I was going to think it comes down to like the colleges. I think they, if they did a better job of marketing, just letting them know that they're out there. Because right now there's only uh, 59 Division one schools, I think. So I think there needs to be more marketing. And just for people to understand that there are other money that you can take to uh, go get an education cheaper than you would if you just went to school and things like that. And then it also comes from uh, our businesses like uh, the NHL and other big leagues, but that just comes with growing the game of hockey as a whole. I still think that needs to uh, keep getting better and better. And that'll help us grow too. And, 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 and like Malcolm, for, for like, High school wise, like, like, so uh, tell us talk about the league because you never hear about like a hockey league. You, know, you hear about AAU basketball, seven seven groups of football, travel baseball. You never hear about how to a young man get reared in hockey. So, what, what, what things are there for kids in seventh through twelfth grade who may be interested in hockey and want to pursue it, but don't have the don't don't really know about where they can get into it? Yeah, I mean, you could just like start at like your local rink. Usually, most most local rinks will have like. Um, either like double A or triple A teams that you start out with. And then there's like a lot of, you don't hear about like the leagues because there are so many hockey leagues in terms of like they call them juniors. But there's a lot of those younger leagues where like the uh, teenagers or and, uh, like younger kids will uh, for the, for the, like plenty of leagues, but you can just have to like on your local rink and just kind of see what teams are around uh, around your area. No doubt, no doubt. And you know what, man? I, I, I think, I think there's just some, some, us, some kids really do that because, like you said, man, it's a fun game to play. It's just a matter of being able to be exposed to it. Because as you know, like you said with marketing, like you said, a lot of things is, is exposure. If you're not exposed to it, you won't, you won't pursue it or know about it. So I think that, that I think hockey should can do it, but like I said, about like, like you know, use you as a example as well, black hockey players. So because. When we see one of us, we feel more apt to want to try and do like Vince Serena did for tennis and Tiger Woods did, did for golf. Exactly. You see somebody on the TV that looks like you, you kind of get that mentality. Well, if he can do it, then I can do it too. Kind of thing. No doubt, brother. And let me ask you this, man. So, you know, being from Detroit, now are you a Lions fan, a uh, Pistons fan, or, or what are you these nah, days? No, nah, 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 I'm from Atlanta. Oh, oh yeah, you're from Detroit. We're only Detroit, too. Yeah, we only trade to like uh, the first grade. So, so you see, so you hawk, so you a hawk fan, then, right? Yeah, but they make it hard. For me. You know, I'm a hawk fan. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I don't really like hawk fans. So. Hey, hey, I'm, 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 I'm most of the home games, bro. I'll be at tomorrow against Memphis and Sunday against the Pelicans. Yeah. I, I'm there, man. I have to watch oh, it. Yeah. I, I have to watch it in my face, brother. Every every night, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it is, man. Yes, it is. And, but you know what, man? Uh, it, it's beautiful that you know we have all these sports here. You and how's this getting to play home, bro? Uh, you're playing at home right now. Uh, of course, of course, I, I know you want to make it to the to, to the big league, of course. But being able to play at home right now and develop your game at home, man, where you where where where, where you got your, got your grounding from, bro? How's that been? How's that been been feeling for you, man? Just nice. It's uh, nice to be able to have a pair of uh, fun the game. It's like that. Was I ever played uh, at home before? So being able uh, to have like all my family be able to come out to basically every game that I'm in is nice. No doubt. And now let me ask you this, man. Now, how was the crowds for you guys, man? Uh, how can we get more fans to come out and watch you all play out there? I mean, the crowd is starting to build up because uh, we're winning, I think. But at the beginning of the day, the crowd was pretty 
this far now it's starting to grow. So I think uh, I think it's done a good job of like starting to grow it as as uh, playoffs get closer. I think we'll start seeing more crowds as well. Our bigger crowd. No doubt. And what I love about you, Malcolm, is, man, you're very passionate about this. You, I, I, I'm passionate about radio. You're passionate about, about hockey. So talk about where does your passion and love for your craft come from? I know for me, it's, it's about just doing something I love. I don't want to have, a, have to get a real job. That's why I do what I do. So for you, what's your passion and motivation every day when you go out there and work out or when you go out there and, you know, hit, hit some pucks, man? Talk about that, brother. No, exactly. Uh, I mean, I'm on the same page as you. you know, I don't really, I don't really want. I guess I would say like a real job. This is like what I enjoy getting. Uh, what I enjoy doing. I get to wake up every morning and play a hockey. So that's where I get like the, uh, the passion from. It. The motivation is that this isn't like guaranteed. This is a. Uh, this can be taken from you at any time. So you know, you gotta earn your keep every day. And that's where I just come from, uh, with that motivation. And I just like working hard, and I just like getting better. And Malcolm, a lot of fans are saying that, you know, for, for, for us athletes, man, like a lot goes into this thing, you know, it's more than just showing up at, at the rink every night. You got to watch film, you got to take care of your body, you got to eat right, you know, so talk about that piece of it as well for the fans who are understanding, hey, it's more than just showing up at the rink and, and, and you could have put on that sweater, man. <laughs> yeah, it comes with a lot of discipline, you know, it's, like it's a four pound, 24 hour job, you got to eat, sleep, breathe it. It's a long season, so that's why you really got to be passionate about it. And that's why I think, like, all the guys on the bus around here are passionate about it, too. Like, like it is like, 24 7. It's always something that you got to be thinking about. Uh, whether it's, you know, getting water, uh, proper nutrition, or making sure you get your rest when you're bus rides like we're on right now. So it all comes into play. And it definitely all makes a big difference, too. No doubt. Well, Malcolm, man, I know you're on the bus, man. Thank you, thank you for giving, coming on the show today, man, brother. And I'll be cheering for you guys, man. I'll be cheering for you personally, my brother. So please, I'll have you on the show again, my guy. Talk, talk some yeah, Hawks sure. and Falcons with you as well and Braves with you. Yeah, I'm down for sure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, brother. Sure.